Igniting, inspiring, and evoking the fire within. I kind of use my cerebral palsy as a vehicle for change and a vehicle to try to show people that, like I said before, no matter what your limits are, you can do anything you set your mind to. So I'd say it's kind of like my, my motivating factor, almost. You're listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Hello and welcome to episode 44 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Today's guest, connected through baseball and CP over 25 years ago, I'm honored to be interviewing a hero. This Williamsport PA native has been on a long time fitness journey and to lose weight, he just shaves his beard. He can pick me up with his pinky and, uh, and shows us no matter what your limitation, you can do it too. The question he asks is, what's your excuse? He's Nevin Grove. Nevin, how are you today? I'm good. And I would always say I'm better than I deserve. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just, competing. I'm just competing and trying to, to, to one-up you there, but I will never be able to do that. So let's get rolling a little bit, just to, to give people a background who are listening and, or watching this on YouTube. Um, Nevin and I, like I said in the intro, connected 25 years ago. Uh, we, we both have cerebral palsy, CP, uh, although he's much better looking and stronger than I am at this point in his life. Uh, so from 1991 to 1996, I was a camper and counselor at Williamsport Little League Baseball Camp in Williamsport, PA. And Devin's, uh, uh, Nevin's dad, Scott Grove, was the uh, camp director. And he took a liking to me, uh, so much so that I stuck around in 95 and 96 and was a counselor at camp at a place that totally changed my life. The last time I saw Nevin, he was eight and I was 18. And I've gotten uglier and you've gotten better looking. So how about that? I don't know if I'd agree with that. I think you look good. <laughs> uh, the old Instagram makeup jobs. Uh, that's true. I, I, I'm, I'm very authentic. Very authentic. So there's the background. Um, the background that I'm showing, if you're watching it on YouTube, is a, a picture of, uh, of Neb, and he's got an enormous, impressive beard. So I want to ask you, Neb, on, on the lighter side to begin, what are the keys to growing a uh, quality beard? Genetics, I think, more than anything, really. Um, my dad never grew a beard. He always shaved, so I can never see his beard. <laughs> but when he was um, when he was sick and came down with his illness, he couldn't shave. So um, he grew a beard, and I found out that I look just like him when he has one. So it's kind of like a remembering my dad type of thing. Sure, a little 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 honor uh, type thing. So how long did it take you to grow a full beard? Um, uh, it's usually like a month. Usually mm -hmm. like a month. You just, you just let it eat, as they say. All right, all right. I'm supporting a little chin strap here. It, it, it pales in comparison to uh, uh, the moss that you have, the big league moss that you have on your face. It's outstanding. Uh, we'll uh, we'll continue with this. Uh, you are you're a gym rat. You've transformed yourself into a gym rat, especially in the last year. I want to ask you this: the biggest obstacle that prevents people from getting to the gym is. Uh, I'd say their own self-confidence or not wanting to, if they don't feel like they don't know what they're doing, that stops people from going. Um, you just got to kind of find your, find your groove and do your thing. Everybody's different with what they can do. I mean, I've gone through a ton of changes to the exercises that I do um, in comparison to when I first started. You know, just from confidence and, and realizing what I actually can do. Yeah, and he, you, he's, if you know Nev and you, you've seen him, he's completely jacked. I mean, he, he could pick me up with his pinky. Your favorite exercise, favorite lift to do in the gym is? Bench press, for yeah. sure. Bench press, no doubt. And you're about 180 pounds. And how much do you bench right now? Uh, 315 or so. Nevin, 315. I am 135 pounds, so we're going, uh, we're going, you know, two and a half of me. All right. 
which which probably means that you could you could lift me up with one hand. Oh boy, uh, hmm. I feel like a fly in the wall right now. So well, let's let's go with this. Your top three excuses for getting fit are. Um, like I said, confidence is a big one. I feel like it um really increased my confidence and and stuff like that to be out in public and also it gives me kind of, of a little bit of a purpose I feel like a way to show that you can get through anything and be strong no matter what your circumstances may be um, but another excuse is just health in general like when I get old I want to be able to still do the things I do now and with CP you never know when it's going to go and you just want to stay in tip-top shape as long as you can. Sure, sure. Because you, you, you don't know. You don't know. I guess with the question, uh, I was uh, looking on your your Facebook page, find your excuse, and you you listed ten things uh, that are excuses, but they're also reasons to get to the gym. And uh, one of the top ones that I read was was your family, and that that uh, they they need you around for as long as they can have you. And I think getting to the gym and pounding the plates uh, is, is, is something that's going to keep you, keep you around for as long as you can, for sure. Do you remember anything else on that list that you wrote? Um, let's see. I actually can't. I mean, I can probably think of some things. Um, like I said, just, Overall health is the main is the main thing, but confidence level and and um, just I I like to show other people because often when I go to the gym, you're gonna have people that are you know I'm sure you've had it in your life when you've done things that you've achieved, but people don't really expect that out of you because of your disability or your limitation, but I want people to know that I can do it and I am strong just like they are. And we're all trying to get to the same goal and happiness also. I mean, fitness for me makes me happy. It's a stress reliever. Um, it does a, so many things for me. I can't even think, you know, I can't even think of. Them. Yeah. Confidence, confidence. And it, it, it gives you from, for me, at least you, you, you feel like, you're given one body, whatever it is, and then when you go and exercise, lift weights, pound plates, whatever it is, you you feel like you're 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 paying homage to the the body that you're given to by God. That's kind of how well, I how I look there's at it. Definitely nothing we can do about the limitations that we have. So once we get here, we got to make the best of them for sure. That's right. Raising the bar, baby. Raising the bar. All right, Nev. We've 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 gotten a little bit of our, our personal relationship and. And getting into the weight room and, and getting fit. We're gonna play a game called now called What, Which, and Where. Are you familiar with the format? I'm actually not. You're not. But so, uh, bluntly said, I like it. Here's here's how it works. I'm just gonna give you a quote from somebody you may or may not know, and I want to see if you can tell us from where it came. Okay. Is it gonna be people that I know, or is it gonna be from anyone possible? It's it's anyone possible, but I've tried to make it people that have a, had an influence on you, both near and far. All right. All right. They're somehow connected. We'll start off with this. The quote goes like this. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. I actually have heard this, but I'm okay. not sure who coined it. You have written this on your Facebook page, or actually on your Instagram page. Have I? Yes, you have. All right. And you took it. Uh, it was like it a for me then. <laughs> uh, it was a screenshot, and I was flipping through. Not that I'm creepy, but I, I like to see your work. I'll read it again. It goes like this: The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. You want to give it a shot? Guess. I can't think of it. I'm sorry. Um, I need to apologize. The, the, the sound of thought. It was, is Winston Churchill. Oh, my goodness, it is. 
It, it certain, certainly is. That's I've great... so many people I can't think of, you know. <laughs> as, a, as a historian, you can only fit so many people in your head. That's it's quite all right. My, that's an awesome quote for him. One of my other favorite quotes from him, uh, this was like 11th grade history class. And our teacher is, is obsessed with him. He's, he's talking about it. And he tells the story about uh, Winston Churchill was at a party. And he was uh, intoxicated. And a, a woman came up to him and said, Oh, Winston, you are drunk. And he responded by saying, Yes, madame, and you are ugly. <laughs> that is a, that's a good quote for sure. Yes, yes. That, certainly, without knowing him personally, that, that definitely sounds like him. The, the rapier-like wit. Okay, we'll go on to the next one, Nev. The quote goes like this. Just be aware of how awesome I am. It's not too much to ask, right? That was me, for that, sure. That was certainly you. Certainly you. So uh, let's boast a little bit. How awesome are you? Um, I feel like I'm really awesome. Maybe not as awesome as you. You're like a... You're like the standard for me. I just try to live up to you. Jeez, I would encourage you to raise the bar, Neff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do, do you realize I can barely cut my toenails? Um, no, uh, me neither. I think that's just CP problems. I don't uh, know. Might be, might be everybody's problems. I met up with a friend who's, who works for a company that makes adaptive equipment. And okay. before I could say a word, um, in, in the mail, she sent me like toenail clippers that you could use while you're standing up. But she didn't realize that my toenails are like rocks. And to cut them, I have to really press down hard. And the, the blade on those things, is it's, it's very dim. So um, I, I, I encourage you and us to just, just go get a pedicure. What the heck? For sure. For sure. I can agree to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it might be an everybody problem. I don't know any of any male that really enjoys cutting their toenails. Definitely not enjoy, but yeah. it's a must. Being able to do it would be nice, you know. But right, I right. Do it. right. Well, uh, Ned, seriously, I, I'm flattered. I, I, uh, I'm flattered by your comment, and all I can do is try to model behavior that was modeled by for me by people like my parents and your dad. So um, there it is. That's you. You are awesome. There was a song years ago, uh, the I'm Awesome song from like 2009. It was, we used to play it in our clubhouse after we won every single game. I uh, think I actually know what song you're talking about. I can't think of the lyrics, but I've definitely heard it before. Is it, I'm on a boat? Is that what it is? I can't, I can't think of it. Um, it's called I'm Awesome, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know who, who wrote it. Okay. I think it was a one-hit wonder. To yes, be honest with you. For sure. It was played ad nausea uh, in the year 2009. All right. All right. We are on number three of what, which, and where. The quote goes like this. My two favorite words are jacked and shots. Hmm. Don't think too hard, Ned. I said that too. It's close. You didn't say it, but. I didn't say that. I was going to say, I don't remember saying that, so. Okay. Well, you didn't say it, but somebody very close to you did. Okay. Let's see. Who would have said that? Was it Jeremy? Was it my cousin or no? If you just look in the mirror, you see him. If I look in the mirror, I see him. You see him. If you, if you yourself look, if you look in the mirror yourself, you see him. The person that said that. My dad said that. Yes. Oh, all right. Totally. He was all about that, your dad. So he was the camp director of Williamsport uh, Little League Baseball Camp for a number of years. When I, uh, from when I met him um, up until, I don't know, you know, he passed in 2010. So when did he um, um, hand over the duties, do you think? Um, he was actually... He was at camp when he got when he went to the hospital, so he was still directing. Okay, so this is two thousand eight, seven, eight. Yeah, seven or eight, and then he came back for a couple of years when he was gone through treatment. I can't think of. 
I can't think of how long he ended up staying for after treatment, but eventually Twig took over in the middle of a session. Like it was like week, it was like week three when he got really, really sick and had to go in. Right. Right. Nick took over, and then now I believe Ryan Novak uh, is the camp director there, who was a player of my dad, was a former player of my dad's. So. Yes. Number of state championships in his tenure there at Williamsport, Williamsport High School. He would always tell me he'd start off a lot of seasons with PTA drills, pain, torture, and agony. That's right. Just, just making his players flat out tough. I do remember that. Um, yes. Players of the best makeup in the history of the uh, history of the world. So, um, big ups to your dad and, and a complete idol of mine. Somebody who, as both a teacher and coach, he's he's right on my right on my right shoulder. Oh, he's probably watching me. I'm, I'm always careful to try to be the right kind of guy. Um, if I think of one word with your two words with your dad, one is loyalty and the other is integrity. Um, for sure. For sure. And Jack and shots because he liked watching balls hit hard and balls that went far and he liked doing that himself. Yes, he did. Yeah, for, yes, sure. he did. for sure. He never took a swing at less than 100% effort. My brother carried that on with Nate. He also never took a swing less than 100%. 100%. So, I mean, was, was Nate a grunter when he swung or is he still that way? Um. Maybe he was a bit of a grunter. He had more power than dad, I would say. Like, my dad used to take uh, baseballs. I don't know if he did this when you were working there or not, but at some point in time, he took a tee and used to sit it on home plate, set a baseball up there on field two, mm -hmm. and um, hit home runs off the tee. But at some point in time, that drill got passed off to my brother, and then he did it. So, What? As a, a coach, Coach Jordan used to coach at the Citadel for a number of years, um, and he, he used to say, uh, you can't be a state champion unless you can hit a fungo home run. And they're hitting, they're hitting T home runs. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Fr uh, Frank Howard is another one that you pair with your, with your dad. He, he used to tell players that uh, he used to coach, you can't play in the big leagues unless you hit a fungo home run in the old Tiger Stadium. But, and in your dad's case and, and uh, Nate's case, you, you can't coach Williamsport uh, Little League Baseball Camp unless you can hit a tee home run off of infield two. Yeah, and everybody seems to think it's an easy thing to do, and then they try to step up and do it, and it just doesn't go. No, no, no. I can attest to that. I was lucky to hit balls off the back of the screen in the batting cage. But I love to swing. So uh, enough about me and all that junk. Great stories about your dad. You're about to be 31 years old, okay? I um, won't we'll show your age, but you're still a young man. When I met your dad, he was 31 years old. When he was 31, I was 11 or 12. Here's the question I have for you, Nev. At age 31 that you are now, and picture your dad being 31, who would win an arm wrestling contest at age 31? You, I, think my, I think my dad still would. I think my dad would still beat me today. Okay. What about if you had 10 tries? I might beat him once, you know. You might beat him once. He's still really strong to me. Like, in my mind, I remember him when I was a kid, and he was always so strong. And, I mean, I remember him when he was, you know, in his 40s. He was benching, like, 350 pounds. So, he was a strong man. Yes, he was a, he was I, just a try, I just try to live up. Just try to live up to him. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. All right. Follow-up question, Nev. How does your dad continue to make you a better man? Oh, I mean, every day. Like, I think about the things that he taught me and the things that he told me I could do. And I, I literally don't have a day or maybe even a moment where I don't think about what would my dad do here and what should I, you know what I mean? Like it's, he's a constant, almost like a conscience inside of me kind of guiding me through life. I feel like. Not a bad guy to have, Nev. Not a bad guy at all. All right. One last question before we wrap it up here. 
How did cerebral palsy continue to make you a better man? Uh, I feel like having a limitation where you're a little bit different, but you're still doing everything that you want to do physically. Just It just makes me feel strong. Like, I know that I wasn't made perfectly. I mean, but I was made the way I was supposed to be made. And I kind of use my cerebral palsy as a vehicle for change and a vehicle to try to show people that, like I said before, no matter what your limits are, you can do anything you set your mind to. So I'd say it's kind of like my my motivating factor, almost, too, is to just show that I can do anything that anyone can do. CP as fuel. CP yep. Fuel. I like that. I like that. Now, how can people get in touch with you? Um, you can follow my Facebook page on Find Your Excuse to Be Fit. Um, or if you want to follow my Instagram, I believe it's just Nevin Grove. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know all my tags and stuff like that. I'm not a, I'm not a promoter of myself nearly enough. I feel like I need to do more of that. Um, I'll do that for you, Nev. I have, I'm going to put find your excuse, the, the, the link to your find your excuse Facebook page in the notes. I already have that. And you are at Nevin Grove. So it's at, and then N E V I N G R O V E on Instagram. If anybody wants to follow, he's, he is a great follow because what, when you, when you do post, it's relevant and appropriate and impactful. Well, thank you. You bet. You bet. Uh, now, um, two more questions. I know so we're going to end, but I want to ask you two more questions. Who would you like to hear on an upcoming podcast? Who would I like to hear on an upcoming podcast? Do I have any choices or anybody? Yeah, you could you could choose anybody you want. Who would you I like? would, well, I would love something baseball related because, as you know, I'm a huge baseball guy. So let's go with – let's get Barry Bonds on the show. How about that? Barry U.S. Bonds. Let's do that. <laughs> we, we, hey, we're just going to – we're just going to reach for the top. Barry Bonds. Right Why not? Why, well, hey, let's see if we can't make that happen. Let's see if we can't make that happen. I mean, he, he definitely likes the words, uh, the word jacked. Yes, he, he does. He, he yes. quite a few in his career, and he definitely is uh, jacked himself. Nev, this is the last question. What's some advice you would have for other people? Um, I'd say something that disability has taught me, and one of my favorite lessons in life is don't sweat the small things. Like, sometimes you're going to go a little off your course that you expect. Uh, but in the end, you're going to get where you need to be. Just believe in yourselves and continue to move forward every day. I like that. I like that because Moog, you and I know mostly when we fall, we fall forward. When we fall forward, we gain ground. Oh, exactly. Now, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. This will wrap up episode 44 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Nev and I will talk with you all later. Take good care. You have been listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Because impact on each other is the greatest currency you could ever have.